G'day and welcome to the Tech Math Channel. What I'm going to be having a look at in this video is we're going to be uh, starting to look at algebra. This is an introduction sort of video looking at algebra where we uh, start to explore this really, really great branch of mathematics. So anyway, uh, if you're, it's your first time doing algebra or if you, you need a bit of brushing up, I think this is a really good video for you to see. So anyway, algebra is basically a branch of mathematics where we use letters or symbols as well as numbers. Um, and basically, this letter or symbols, they, they take place of an unknown value or a value which might change. So you might occasionally see this thing written as follows. You might see, say, something like, uh, you know, occasionally you might see this written as an X, so X plus 2 equals an unknown number like Y or something like this. But we're using letters instead of numbers here. And this tends to throw a few people, so don't get too scared when you first see them because we much treat these letters the same as we treat numbers in normal mathematics. So I'll give you an example of this. Say we have a, something like a rectangle. And I'll, I'll show you how we can do a, a tr uh, algebraic example here. So we had a rectangle here and we, we knew that the side length here was seven centimeters and this side length here was three centimeters. Okay, well, say I said I wanted to work out the uh, perimeter of this. Well, the way we do it is as follows. Okay, we'll get the, this perimeter, this P equals, and it'd be equal to seven this side here, as well as this side here, so plus 3, plus this side here, plus 7, plus this side here, which is 3. Okay, so altogether that would be 20 centimetres. And that's all well and good, and, and it's not too bad, okay, that's, that's fairly easy. And all we're doing is we're adding the sides together, but what I'll do is I'll actually get rid of these numbers now, and I'll write it slightly differently. So say we actually don't give you the R uh, the actual side lengths here. Instead I actually give them as I'll give them as something that can change. I'll give the length here as an L and I'll give the width here as a W. And now I say I want you to work out the perimeter. Okay, so we actually haven't got the length and the width stated here, but we can still actually show a relationship uh, to work out the perimeter and it's as follows. So the perimeter, well it would be equal to, like we did before, it's we've got a length and a width. Okay, so the length plus the width plus this length, plus the width. Okay, so we could actually take that a step further. We could say we've got two lengths. Okay, I'll put a little L there. I think maybe that will make it a bit easy to see there. Okay, so we've got two lengths, and we have two widths. So all of a sudden what we've done is we've written this as an algebraic expression, okay? Instead of actually putting uh, numbers there. And a bit later on what we might do is we can actually substitute values in here where we said, say, this length here is seven. Okay, so two times seven, and this one here was three, so two times three. And again, if we do that, two times seven is 14, two times three is six, and we end up with 20 centimeters. But this way here is written algebraically. So this algebraic expression has two terms here. It has this L and this W, okay? Uh, and they also have this thing here, which is called a coefficient in front of them. Both have this coefficient of two. The number in front of the R, of the algebraic expression, what we might call a variable, is called a coefficient. So that's, that's an example of, say, something algebraic. So from here what we're going to be doing is we're going to start actually having a look about how we can actually write certain algebraic expressions and then how we can simplify them. Okay, so it's a really, really good thing for you to be able to get the hang of before you start then launching into later algebra. So say, for instance, what I wanted to do was I wanted to actually write four times a number, okay? So how could I actually write four times any given number here using algebra? So what we could do here is, first off what we're gonna do is we're gonna replace the word number, four times a number, we're gonna replace that word number with x, so four times x. So we've changed it to a letter here. Okay, so four times x. We can actually write this, we don't bother put the, x, the times in here a lot of the time. What we start to actually do is we write this as 4x. So if you start seeing algebraic expressions like this, 4x, what it actually means is 4 times a given number. Say x was, for example, 3. Okay, 4 times 3 would be 12. Or say it was 7, 4 times 7 would be 28. Okay, so x can, can change here. Um, so I'll give you another example. Say I wanted to write 5 times a certain number. How would I write that? I'd write that 5 times, and you can choose any letter. Do, you, do I have to use X? No, I might use A here, but you, can, you might have used X. 
Okay, so 5 times A, and we get 5A. Now, it doesn't actually matter what actual letter we use with this, okay? Um, often we'll use X's and we'll use Y's and we'll use A's and we'll use B's. But it's just mainly fairly uh, a good thing to actually do is is to actually you know, try to be a bit consistent with these. And, and I also try to use letters that often don't get confused with numbers, like I think uh, using L or something like a, an O can be very confusing because it could look like a zero. Okay, um, so another thing with when we're doing algebra is we can also add certain algebraic expressions together, ones with like terms. And these are ones that contain exactly the same pronumerals. I'll show you what I mean by this, okay? Um, so, uh, say I had say something like um, 4x plus 5y plus 2x. Okay, you can see here that we actually have a couple of these uh, pronumerals here are the same. We have this 4x here and we have 2x here. We can actually group these together, okay? So we can, what we can do with these is 4x plus 2x. What we can actually do is we can group these guys together. So 4x plus 2x is 6x because we're adding them together, okay? So 4x plus 2x is 6x. And 5y you're going to see is different. We can't actually add this to 6x. It's a different pronumeral, so we can't actually group that in with that. So we actually put this over here as just plus 5y. Okay, and this is a way that you can actually simplify uh, algebraic expressions. So number one, what we can do, this means six times x, and we can put those together. But we can also add ones with like terms together. Ones that are not like terms, we can't add together. And I'll give you another example of an unlike term, which is a fairly good one to be able to understand. Because it's, a, it's another good thing that you, you sort of get is that the actual uh, the powers of the term also matter. And I'll show you what I mean by this. Say I had say something like x squared. This means x times by itself. And I add this to 8x. And I take 5x. And I add 2. And I say I want to simplify this expression. So what I want to do is group any of the like terms together. Now you're going to see here we've got x squared. We've got 8x. Neg negative 5x and we've got 2. So First off, we can actually say this negative 5x and this 8x here can be grouped together. But what about this x squared here? And unfortunately, we can't group these guys together because this is a different power to x here. Okay, so you can't group these guys together. So they have to be of the same power. So if it's x to the 2, you can't add it. If it's x to the 3, you couldn't add it. So we end up with the following. We end up with this x squared. And we're going to add 8x take away 5x. So 8x take away 5x is 3x, and then this 2 here, plus 2, also can't be grouped. So we end up with this sort of expression. Okay, I'll give you an example which I'll get you to answer by yourself. So like, what about a couple of these? So I'm going to get you to um, group these sorts of uh, questions here. So I want you to group up uh, 3y plus 2x plus 4y. How would you go about grouping those? Okay, so hopefully what you're going to do is you're going to realise that we have the same uh, pronumeral here, the same letter here in Y, 3Y and 4Y, so we can group these guys together. 3Y plus 4Y is 7Y, and here we have this 2X. So you can't be grouped any further, it's a completely different letter, so we end up with just place 2X. Okay, and it seems a little bit strange at the moment, okay, this, this, and you might actually still get that this means 7 times y, and it's plus 2 times x, okay, it's an important thing to understand also. And also, what we will eventually do a bit later on is we, we might give y a value, we'll say, you know, say we can set y equal 3 and uh, x equals 2, what would our expression equal. We might do that, okay? That sort of thing does happen in math. So if y was to equal 3, 7 threes are 21, plus x equals 2, 4 equals 25, okay? So that's that's the sort of thing you might be doing in algebra, okay? Um, okay, what are we going to head on to next? Um, so we can also multiply and divide occasionally when we're talking about unlike terms. Okay, so we can add and subtract like terms, but we can actually multiply unlike terms. And I'll show you what I mean by this. Say 
we were to actually say what is 6x times 3y. Okay, we were asked to simplify this. Now, with this, what you might realise is, okay, there's, they are different, they're unlike terms. We can, can actually, um, we can actually multiply these. I'll show you how to do this. 6 times 3 is 18. So we actually multiply these coefficients as normal. Also on top of this, because if I actually write this, this is 6 times x times 3 times y. Okay, so 6 times 3 is 18. We also times it by x. Okay, and we're also times it by y. So we end up with 18xy. This means 18 times x times y. Okay, so we end up multiplying these expressions together. So when you're first doing these, that's probably not a bad idea to actually write them out the long way until you get used to actually doing this. So you, but you can actually do this. So I'll give you another example for you to go and say I asked you to multiply 5x times uh, 3y. Okay, so you might write this as 5 times x times 3 times y. Okay, there's two numbers here, the 5 and the 3, we can multiply each other we get 15 times x, so we just put the x there, times x, times y. Okay, because this, this here, they're sitting next to each other, it just means they times one another, so 15xy. Um, another type of uh, multiplication we can do when we do uh, algebra, geez, there's so many of them, isn't there? But they're not too bad, you do get used to them, is this sort of thing. So we actually had 4x, and I wanted to multiply this by x. Okay, how would you go about doing this? Well, with this, it's, it's, it's kind of a funny thing, but what you might realise is this is equal to, again, at the start when you're first doing this, you might write this as 4 times x times x. Now, if I was to put a brackets around here, this x and this x here, you're going to realise possibly that this is equal to x squared, a number times itself is said to be squared, okay? And then what we have is we have this x squared and we multiply this by 4. So we end up with 4x squared. I'm about to give you one of these. Uh, what about we do uh, 3x times... What about I'll, I'll do, I won't do just x, I'll do I'll even go a step further, I'll do it times 4x. So first off, write it all out. So we have 3 times x times 4 times x ok so first off we can do 3 times 4 which is 12 times x times x so x times x is x squared ok so we might even write at the start x times x when you're first working these out and then you realise that this here is x squared so it equals 12x squared and when you're first doing these, you might get a few of them incorrect, and, and it might be a bit of a, you know, a bit hard when you're first starting, but, but don't get too despondent with it. You do get used to them. What about just one more like this? Um, what about we do a bit of a more difficult one? What about I do, say, something like minus 2xy, and I'm going to multiply this by 3y. Okay, it's a pretty difficult one, yeah? Again, so what we start off doing is we will write equals, and it equals minus 2 times x times y times 3 times y. Okay, so we've written it all out this long way. Okay, so first off, let's multiply the coefficients. So we've got minus 2 times, mi uh, times 3. Minus 2 times 3 is minus 6. Okay, we have an x here, so I'll put that down, we have an x, so we're times in by x, and we also have two y's, so y times y, so this is y times y, which is y squared. Okay, um, I'll tell you what I'll do with this, I will give you a bunch of examples here right now to go through, and we'll see how you go with these, okay, and then we'll, we'll answer these, so this, that was a whole big lesson on that, and I think it's a really, really difficult one when you're first starting out, but don't feel too bad with this, okay? Because if you can get those, you pretty much will work out a lot of the algebra without much sweat.
So what about first off? Um, we'll start off very simply. Um, can you simplify these sort of things? So I'll put up five questions. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so the first one I'll put up is as follows. What about I get you to simplify uh, 3x uh, plus 2y minus 2x. What about this one here? Well, we'll go um, x squared plus 3x plus 2x squared minus y. Okay. Um, what about this one here where we'll go, what is 3x times 4y? What about we go, what's 3x times 2x? And last of all, what's uh, minus 2y times 3xy? Ah, leave it there, okay? So we'll give that a go. So pause it, give it a go, see how you go. We'll work through these particular answers. Okay, so how'd you go? Did you pause that? Or you just, you just didn't pause it at all with your go and let him work it out for me? Anyway, hopefully you pause it and we'll see how you do. Anyway, let's first off, we'll get to this first question. 3x plus 2y minus 2x. So first off, we had to recognise these like terms. And these are the ones with the same pronumeral, the same letter. 3x, take away 2x is x. Okay? And we're left with plus 2y. Okay. So that hopefully you got that answer. What about this next one? We'll, I'll, I'll, again, I'll underline the ones with the same coefficients and, and to the same power. So we have x squared plus 3x plus 2x squared minus y. So x squared plus 2x squared. We have 3x squared. Uh, then we have plus 3x, which is by himself, plus 3x. And we also have minus y, which is also by itself. So we're going to not be able to do much more with those. So hopefully you went well with that. What about this number 3? 3x times 4y. Okay, so this is going to be equal to 3 times x times 4 times y. Okay, so 3 times 4, we multiply these coefficients and we get 12. And then we get the x there, and then we have also times in the y there. So 3 times 4 is 12, times x times y. Okay, what about this next one? 3x times 2x. So first off, I'll multiply these coefficients actually. So we're going to end up with 3 times x. First off, I'll write the whole lot out. 3 times x times 2 times x. Coefficients, 3 times 2 is 6, and then we have x times x. So x times x is x squared. How'd you go with that? And last of all, we have this minus 2y times 3xy. So again, first off, I'll write them all out. Minus 2 times y times 3 times x times y. First we multiply these coefficients, these numbers, so minus 2 times 3 is minus 6. Hopefully you got the minus 6 there, yeah? Yeah, that's a bit of a trick there. And we've got 1x, so I'm going to put that down. And we have y times y, so we have y squared minus 6xy squared. You know, it actually doesn't matter also if you've ever written it in a different way. If you've written it minus 6y squared x, it's exactly the same number. Okay, it still means minus 6 times x times y squared, and this one also has minus 6 times x times y squared. It's just written in a different order. Okay, it's like this one up here. If you had written this as 12yx, it's exactly the same number. I just tend to put the x's before I put the y's. Okay, it's a, just a bit of a habit I, I've got into. Anyway, hopefully that was of uh, some use to you. In future videos, what we're going to be having a look at is we're going to start actually uh, taking this a little bit further where we're going to start expanding and uh, working out different factors and things like this with algebra. So we're going to make this algebra a little bit more uh, complex. Anyway, I hope to see you then.